What's up, navigation traders? Today is Friday, June 28th. Welcome to this week's video update. This is our pro members exclusive update for all your positions and alerts throughout the week. Uh, before we jump into the alerts, just want to make sure everybody is aware. We sent out an email yesterday about our newest strategy course that's coming out. A little bit different format this time. Uh, if you're in the community, you can just go to events, pops up here and gives you a little bit more information. You can go to navigationtrading.com slash weekly income uh, to check that out and to register to save your spot. The, uh, the goal of this is a couple things. You know, most of our strategy, well, all of our strategy courses in the past have been, you know, separate lessons, and it takes a really long time to produce these courses. I've got several different strategies that I really want to get out to our community, uh, but it takes just so much time to create these courses. And so I'm using a little bit different format this time. Please let me know after, after, uh, after you watch this, if you like this new format. For us, it makes it uh, a lot less time consuming to create the course and we can get it out to you all sooner and then add additional modules as different questions come up. So let me know. We're going to do this live on Tuesday, July 2nd at 4 p.m. Central Time. If you're listening to this, you are a pro member. And, uh, and so this will be recorded and put into your members area after we're done. And, um, and so let, yeah, let me know how you like the new format. And if you'd like us to, you know, continue with this or the old model of all the old lessons put together first, pre-recorded and put out. Uh, but this course is all about weekly options. And there's two strategies that I are so powerful. I'm so excited to share these with everyone. Um, here's what you'll learn how we routinely make 40% ROI in less than seven days, the top two strategies we use to produce weekly income, the three most profitable symbols we trade for weekly income, exact entry, exit criteria, you know, just like we teach our other courses, we don't hold nothing back every step of what we're doing. Uh, the best way to trade for a small account, you know, so that's important. We've got some traders who have large seven-figure accounts, but we've got a lot of traders who have small accounts as well. So uh, specific ways to enhance your small account returns. And lastly, how to reduce taxes on your trading profits by more than 50%. The other thing, these two strategies we're teaching, these are IRA eligible. So you can trade them in a margin account or an IRA, which I know is great for some because there are some folks who are just trading in an IRA. And uh, so if you want to register, please go to navigationtrading.com slash weekly income, or you can click on events here in the community and there's the link right there. So look forward to it on Tuesday. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a good one. Next, I want to go to who got caught being hot. Uh, this week's winner goes to uh, our member who goes by the name of Dominic Chen. And Dominic asked some great questions. I, I, I mentioned here that you know, I think a lot of people don't ask questions for fear of thinking the group might think, oh, that's a dumb question. But the reality is, if you're thinking it, if you have that question, there is a good chance that others have that question as well. So it's a great way to, to join in the community, help other traders by creating conversations. And that's exactly what Dominic did. So congrats, Dominic. You got caught being hot. And I sent you a direct message to pick up some Trade Hacker swag. We've got t-shirts, mugs, and more stuff to come in the future. So congrats there. Keep up the good work. And let's jump into the alerts. Starting with Monday the 24th, uh, our first trade was a closing adjusting trade in gold. So we closed out the put vertical side of our iron condor in GC. Price had breached the upper side, up, upper break even. Very little value left in that put vertical, so we closed it out. And then the very next trade, we added a another iron condor centered in the uh, same cycle, both in August or the one with 31 days to expiration at that time. Uh, so we just took off the, uh, the uh, untested side on this one, and then we added a new centered iron condor at a different price level here. So let's take a look. At GC, here is the remaining call vertical side of, of that one that we took off. And so we just need we need price to go down to get back into range on that piece. 
and then our other full iron condor here. And because it was in the same cycle, you see I varied the number of contracts. So we had two on the other one. This new one we added with three. Uh, helps us keep it straight, especially if we're in the same cycle. Uh, and you can see prices still dead centered there. We've got a little bit of, little bit of profit since we put it on, uh, but just waiting for some more time to pass there. Uh, okay, let's see. Next trade was opening adjusting trade in ZB. So we added a short strangle in ZB, the bonds, uh, out in the September cycle with 60 days to expiration. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, with, with we look at TLT primarily as the indicator for our implied volatility levels to determine if the options are expensive or cheap. But you can trade ZB, ZN is a little bit smaller, and then TLT is the ETF. So depending on uh, what you want to do, any of those are fine. Uh, and then we, so we've got two pieces on in ZB now. We've got our, this one that we just put on. You can see it's got a little bit of profit here, and it's pretty well centered. And then we've got the one in the August cycle, uh, which currently has, I know Tastyworks calls it, July. So just want to make sure, just always go by the days to expiration. Uh, according to Toss, August has 28. SEP has 56. Toss may say July and August, but it's the same exact uh, underlying contracts. Uh, just, just pay attention to the days to expiration. So the August one here with 28, uh, this is the one that we had adjusted into a straddle. You can see prices outside the range of that one. If we look at just the, put, uh, just the puts, you can see it's we're close to needing to roll those up. And if price continues much higher in bonds early next week, we will do that. We'll roll up our puts. And at this point, we've got 28 days to expiration. So by next week, we'll have you know 25, 24. So if we're getting kind of near that 21 days to expiration. So if we do roll up those puts, we will also roll that out to September, roll the entire spread out to September. So that's where we're at in bonds. If we take a look at TLT, uh, you can see the implied volatility is still nice and high. IV percentile at 69. These bonds have just been on a tear to the upside. Now we're kind of consolidating sideways. Um, so we'll see what happens into next week. You know, the Fed came out and said they're planning on not raising interest rates at all in 2019, which is bullish for bonds. And, and that's what we saw happen there. So We'll see what happens in the next week with the price. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in the queues. So we've got our two sets of short call verticals that we've been kind of rolling and extending duration, holding for that short delta exposure. Uh, these price kind of got out of range with the market really rallying, kind of got out of range. And so we wanted to uh, at least roll one of these out to the next uh, expiration, extend that duration, keep that short delta, and get us back to a positive theta position. Uh, we, we like to be positive theta as opposed to negative theta. And when it gets way out of range, that's when you start seeing a little bit of the theta decay go against you. So we, we kept one of them in July and we rolled one out to August and we will address the other one as we get closer to expiration. But let's take a look at the cues and go to the analyze tab here. So here's the one that we have not rolled. So this is the one still in July where you can see it's well out of range. So we need some downside to get back into range, but we've got 21 days. Yeah, 21 days in July. And remember, it's the on the uncovered options, strangles, straddles, that kind of thing. If we get down to 21, that's when we want to roll out. With defined risk, we'll give it a little bit more time. We'll even hold it all the way to expiration week. So We've got some time there, but we definitely want to get back into range to get back to that positive theta position. And then the other piece is the one from the alert that we did roll out. And you can see price is kind of hanging out right here, made up a tiny bit since we've done the roll. But again, just looking for some downside to benefit both of those trades. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in SMH. So we uh, we took off one of our pieces of SMH last week, and now we just added another piece back in. So we added a short strangle out in the August cycle with 52 days, and then we're still holding our other piece as well. So let's take a look at here's the here's the one price is hanging out right here. This is our adjusted one in August, and so we're just waiting for some more time to pass, some more theta to decay on that one. And then here's the one from the alert uh, where you can see prices still fairly centered. It's moved, made a move higher. And 
uh, options actually expanded. The prices went up a little bit, so we're down a little bit on the trade, but still well within range. So just holding that one for now. Next trade, closing trade in XRT. So we had a short strangle, booked over 50% of max profit on that trade. So we are out of XRT. Uh, let's see, I was looking at this earlier. Let me, let's just check out where the implied volatility is on XRT. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's really contracted. So uh, if, if we get a little bit of a, you know, a uh, continuation to the downside that will push implied volatility higher. If we get back above that 50 level, we'll look to potentially re-enter in XRT, but we are out as of now. Next trade, another closing trade in CL. Uh, we are in a short strangle in CL. This one went against us right at the beginning, but they came back to center. And, uh, you know, that's why you got to let these probabilities play out. You got to give it time and booked over 40% of max profit on that trade. No adjustments or anything, so we never did adjust. We were close to needing to make an adjustment, but price came all the way back into center and booked a nice profit on that one. So we were out of CL at that point. Now, we did enter a new position in CL this morning, which I'll get to in just a second. Uh, the next trade alert, opening adjusting trade in ZW. So we added, a, uh, we added an iron condor in ZW, then a couple alerts later, right here, we closed out one. So we added one and then we uh, closed out that one. We booked 40% of max profit on that one. And then this with this one that we opened, we're still pretty close to center. Let's take a look at that one. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Big, <laughs> yeah, we had a big move down today. So we are not exactly centered, but uh, we are you know still well within range here. Down slightly on the trade. Uh, just waiting for price to uh, to stabilize a little bit within our range to collect that theta. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in IYR. So we had rolled our short call vertical from last cycle, which is part of an iron condor, and uh, <clears throat> worked out well because uh, price made a nice sharp down move in IYR this week. We were well over 50% of max profit on that piece, so we went ahead and closed it but we're still holding an iron condor. And then the next trade, we added another iron condor. Price was at the very lower end of our range on this one, uh, excuse me, in our other iron condor. And so we added, went ahead and added another one. So let's go to the platform and take a look at both of those pieces now. So we've got two different sets of iron condors. One is in July and that's sitting right here. Made some, uh, we're up a little bit of money on that one, but not enough to take off. And then the one in August is right here. So down slightly on that one. I'm uh, just waiting for some more time to pass on that. Hopefully we get a little bit of a ping pong action in price and we can win on both. So we'll see what happens there. Next trade, uh, that's that closing adjusting trade in ZW I mentioned. And then we had a rolling adjusting trade in SMH. So I already showed this one, but just to kind of reiterate what we did here. So this one um, right here, this was in July. We were well over 50% of max profit on that piece of the trade. So we went ahead and just extended duration, rolled it out to August, and then price is just kind of sitting right here. So just waiting for some more time to pass on that one. Next trade, closing trade in KRE. So we had to make one adjustment on this one. We rolled our strangle up into a straddle and then uh, came back to center. And we booked a small profit on this after adjustments. Uh, IV was contracting. So, uh, you know, the other option is we could have rolled this out to extend duration to go for some more profit. We opted just to close it for a small profit. IV percentile at 62 at that time. Uh, we were looking for a potential uh, little pop in IV before we re-entered. Uh, that has not happened yet. Let's take a look. Uh, you can see we've got a even more of a contraction. So we're actually below that 50 level on the IV percentile. Now, if we get a little bit of a uh, continuation back down to the downside, applied volatility will spike up and we'll look to potentially re-enter on KRE. But for now, we are out. Lastly, we opened a new short strangle in CL oil. And let's take a look at that. We just entered that this morning. So not much movement. We are dead centered, no profit or loss yet on that one. So just playing the waiting game. 
in oil. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions. The ES up about 12, per, uh, 12 points at this point. We've got this long put vertical that we need to come down back into range. We've been holding this one just it's almost as a hedge. It's kind of part of our short delta exposure. Speaking of short delta exposure, we are, we're right at uh, about two to one on our short delta versus our theta. So we're in good, we're in a good spot here, not too short, um, but we've got a little bit of short exposure, which is good. So that's where we're at overall. I mentioned gold, natty gas. So we've still got this uh, short, two pieces of our short strangle that we're trying to work back to profitability. Price is hanging out down here on our lower end of our range, right at our break even. Uh, if we look at just the untested side, the two calls, you can still you can see we still got a decent amount of premium left in those. So not looking to roll our calls down yet. Uh, we've got 28 days to expiration. So next week, uh, well, once we get down to under 21 days to expiration, we'll look to potentially roll this one out to the next expiration cycle. But no action needed at this time. And remember, on our put side, we've got two puts at the three strike. So we're sharing that one. Uh, so both of them combined look like this. And then, uh, let's see, we already went over bonds, went over wheat, uh, apple. So we have this uh, long put vertical in apple. We put on for some short delta exposure. Price has been strong. We need some downside to get back into range here. You can see price is just kind of hanging out right here, consolidating the last uh, over this week, kind of bouncing around. We need a little bit of downside to get back into range there. Uh, John Deere, man, this thing's been strong. We put this on, you know, we had this huge push down, big drop after earnings, and then it rallied, and we were looking for a continuation to the downside, but that has not happened, continues to the upside. So we're still holding on to our John Deere vertical spread. DIA, we've got uh, we've got two pieces on here. We've got a full iron condor. You can see price is hanging out, still within range here in the upper end of that range. And then we've also got this short call vertical from our other previous iron condor where we need some downside to get back into range there as well. FXI, so this is one where it's close to it's close to needing an adjustment. Wanted to give it over the weekend. If you look at the untested side, you can see a lot of that premium has been sucked out. Uh, but if we take a look at what that closing price would look like, uh, you know, we've got about six cents. I had an order in it at five cents today. Never, never came down to it. So we're just going to hold it over the weekend and uh, hopefully get a little bit of downside action back into range there. Um, you can see the implied volatility is somewhat low, around the 21 level on both the rank and the percentile. So I didn't look to add a new piece to this. Uh, centered. So we're just managing this one and we will close out the untested side if we need to next week. Uh, if implied volatility pops, then we might potentially add to this. But right now we're just managing as is. Goldman Sachs, uh, this is a long put vertical. We actually had a decent profit on here, but not enough. And we were holding it for some before that short delta exposure and move all the way up out of range here. Uh, just recently, you know, we really, you know, we came down after we put it on and then just has really rallied. So uh, managing that, we'll, we'll try to probably get out of this before earnings. We'll see where we're at with everything. Uh, but as of now, we are just holding on to that. Uh, Intel, we've got this adjusted strangle that we rolled. Uh, we're, we are right at about break even after all adjustments. And so just waiting for some more time to pass on this one before we do anything. Intel has earnings coming up, not until July 25th, so we've got some time uh, between now and then. Hopefully, we get some uh, some decay in those options, uh, and we're able to close that before earnings. IWM is up strong today. Uh, we've got an iron condor price kind of hanging out in the upper end of the range here. The uh, IV percentile still decent, and so we might look to potentially add to this next week. Uh, depending on where we're at with everything. IYR, I mentioned that one. McDonald's, we put this on as a uh, long pre-earnings, uh, long straddle. See, You can see earnings announcements out on July 26th. And you can see price has just been, I mean, super, super steady here, consolidating. So looking for price to break out one way or another. It looks like it's breaking out to the upside. So we'll see if that continues. 
And uh, so here's where we're at. We got a little bit of profit here, up about 40 bucks, but we're looking for about 15 to 20% profit on this. So if it continues to the upside, we can get a few hundred bucks. That's what we're looking for at a Mickey D's. I mentioned the Q's, I mentioned SMH, SPY. We've got two pieces on here. Uh, one is this short call vertical spread, looking for some downside action to get back into range there. And then the other is our full iron condor. Price is hanging out in the upper end of the range. Just looking for a little bit of downside to uh, before we take that one off. And lastly, XLK, our long put vertical. Just need some downside to get back into range there. Again, in July, we've got 21 days to expiration. Uh, if it goes much higher, we will probably close this or roll it out to August. Uh, but we will make those updates next week. Everybody have a great weekend. Remember, Tuesday, 4 o'clock Central Time. Be there for the weekly income options class. Uh, super excited about it. Look forward to seeing you there. Have a great weekend. Talk to you next week.